Hey guys, I thought I would do just a simple uh, illustration here. So here we have an impassable gulf, okay, between this area and this area. Okay, so we have this impassable gulf, all right? So this side and this side are mutually exclusive, okay? There's no way this side can, anybody on this side can get over to this side, okay? So on this side, we have works on this side, okay? And on this side, we have grace, all right? So works and grace are mutually exclusive due to this impassable gulf, all right? So with works, we have the old man or Adam, the first Adam, okay? And the law, see that? They're, they're the law was given to magnify the inadequacy of works and its total inability to ever cross this impassable gulf, okay? So works, sin, okay? The law was given so that sin would abound. The strength of sin is the law, okay? So there was only one solution. The only solution was the cross, okay? Where grace, Jesus, the second Adam, had to step down from heaven, come down to us, and die for us. Okay? There's only one direction in which this thing works. It doesn't work from going from here to here. It only works from here coming down here to us, to man. Okay? That is true of justification, sanctification, and glorification, okay? It's all by faith in the blood of Jesus, which was shed on us on the cross, okay? Where our flesh was crucified at the cross and done away with and buried in the tomb, okay? So this is how salvation works for the individual, okay? All right, since the time of Adam all the way to now, it, individual salvation has always been by grace through faith, okay? Under the everlasting covenant. Okay, so under the everlasting covenant for individual salvation, this is how salvation works, okay? The law was given to magnify the inadequacy of any, every, and all works to, pos to ever get man across this impassable gulf. So Jesus, grace, had to step down uh, to earth and incarnate as a man to make the way to salvation possible, all right? That's how individual salvation works under the everlasting covenant, okay? All right. So now that we have that uh, straightened out, we're going to, I'm going to try to do a simple illustration regarding the church under the New Testament ministry and national Israel under the new covenant. So here you got you know, the everlasting covenant for individual salvation and and you've got two groups. You've got the church 
and you've got national Israel. Now, the church is under, now the church, we are beneficiaries of the everlasting covenant through, through Christ, because we are in Christ, we are hidden, okay? So, because we're in Christ, we're beneficiaries of the, what am I saying, everlasting covenant, there we go, all right? Israel, in the millennium, is they are going to be partakers of the, excuse me, let me see if I can get this straightened out here, the new covenant. But if the covenant is a new covenant, then that meant that there must have been an old covenant to begin with, right? There must have been, and they broke it because they were cast out of their land. And so in the millennium and the remnant that will be saved after tribulation, they will be partakers of the new covenant, okay? I just have to make a uh, correction real quick. When I was doing my earlier in the video, when I said that's how salvation worked from Adam on to right now, that is true. That is true. However, in the church age, we are the ones who have been crucified uh, in Christ. Okay. From Adam up until the church age, um, they, they were saved by, gr by grace through faith in the seed of the woman, the seed of Abraham, and the seed of David, but, um, and, and we are saved in the church age by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but we are the ones that have been crucified in Christ, okay? Uh, the Old Testament saints did not have that benefit of being crucified with Christ, okay? I just wanted to make that quick distinction and quick correction. I will try to... In the description box or in the title or something, I will try to notate this correction in the description box below. Okay, so the church in Christ, we are recipients of the New Testament. Whereas during the millennial reign, Israel will be uh, participants in the new covenant, okay? All right. As such, Israel will receive uh, every single person in Israel and under the new covenant during the millennial reign of Christ will receive a new heart and they will dwell in the land for a thousand years during the millennial reign of Christ who will be physically ruling from Jerusalem seated on the throne of David, okay? All right, so the church, we are recipients of the New Testament where, where we have received receive a regenerated spirit, okay? But we do not receive a new heart. We have a new spirit, but not a new heart. That's why we have to renew our minds daily. That's why we need teachers, pastors, evangelists, okay? Prophets, which of course prophecy is uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Also, we do not inherit land. We inherit Christ himself, okay? We are seated in heavenly places, according to Ephesians 1, okay? So in Christ, the church, we have become recipients of the New Testament, in which there must be the death of the testator, in which we have died in Christ, and our flesh has been crucified on the cross. We have a regenerated spirit, but not a new heart, which is why we need we need to renew our minds. The Israel national Israel in the millennial reign will not need to renew their minds because not only will they have a new spirit because uh, I will put my new spirit within them, uh, but they will and uh, I will give remove their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. They'll have a new spirit and a new heart, okay? And everything will be manifested for all to see. We are hidden in Christ. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. The world doesn't see us. Although, we must function in the world, okay? We still have to work. We still have to take care of our families. We still have responsibilities. We can't use our position in Christ as a cop-out 
to take care of our responsibilities here on earth, okay? Just saying. Um, I'll try to put a link to David Benjamin's video in the description box below as well. It's long, but it's well worth it. Of course, uh, the cross is the center of it all. Okay. All right, guys. Be blessed.